was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Your book might say if I could just touch the hem of his garment. Praise God. Immediately, the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt her body, felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power has gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, You see the multitude thronging you, and you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord, we bless you and we thank you for this appointed time to declare your word. Father, we speak that your word will go forth unhindered in the name of Jesus and that the word of God will fall on good soil, that it may take root and begin to produce the fruit that you desire in the name of Jesus. And we declare that the enemy shall not steal that which you send, but it will remain and come forth for thy glory, producing the fruit that you desire in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. We thank thee and declare it to be so. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Praise God. And as usual, as I go through the week and, and, and praying and stuff, I have to meditate and say, Lord, what are you, what are you going to have uh, to share in terms of your word and where are you taking me? And so this past week, the Lord just been dealing with me. You know, I've been, been sharing with you about the power of our words and death and life being in the power of the tongue. Amen. And so as I began to reread, God began to allow me to even revisit back to some of my college days, praise God, as I was studying in this particular passage of scripture here in Mark 5. And as I began to, to read the verses, there are some principles in God's word, praise God, that we, we must understand, praise God. And if you remember last week, I think I said that we sometimes complicate it, but God got it very simple, amen, praise God. And so as I began to, to look here in Mark 5 and begin to read this passage, the Lord began to bring and point out some of the passages or uh, some of the principles that, that I have been speaking on. And, you know, faith comes by hearing. Praise God. And so we must hear the word. And the more we hear the word, the more our faith is developed. And so as I was looking at this passage, I said, Lord, what, what is the topic? And God dropped in my spirit. God is waiting on me. God is waiting on me. And as the Lord began to deal with me on this particular passage of Scripture here, what God began to share in his word and what he began to open up is the devil has moved in with a spirit of deception. Yeah. Praise God. And what I'm talking about, I'm not talking about just here at True Faith. I'm just talking about in general, the devil is operating under deception. Praise God. And what I mean by deception, that means something appears to be real that's not real. Praise God. Amen. And as we begin to look here in the principle of this word with this lady, with this issue of blood, praise God, she began to demonstrate what was going on because God has... A lot of us, and we're in it to this new year, praise God. And if I would just take a moment, praise God, before I get into my message, is there anybody in here today, praise God, and before you answer the question or, or whatever, I'm not going to ask you what you're dealing with, and I ain't going to ask you about your issue, okay? So you ain't got to be scared to answer if you got something that you want God to deliver or to heal you from, amen? 
praise God. And if you've got a prayer request, is there anybody in here that's got a prayer request before the Lord and you need him to do something for you and you may have been needing it done for quite some time, but it seemed like ain't nothing happened yet? Yeah. Is there anybody in here? Amen. 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 Praise God. And so as God began to bring that thought to mind, that's why God says, remind the people of what the word of God is saying. Praise God. God is waiting on us. See, sometimes we are praying for God to do certain things when God has already done certain things. Praise God. And a good example, praise God, is this lady right here, she needed healing. And the word says that she had been going to the doctors for 12 years. Praise God. And trying different things that the physicians were offering her and spent all of her money and none of the treatment and what they were providing seemed to make a difference for these 12 years. Well, the lady got word that Jesus was coming through. And she had heard about him being one that would heal. Praise God. And so the lady began to decide, I done tried these doctors for 12 years. I done spent all that I have and nothing have seemed to change. Praise God. And since nothing has changed and I heard that Jesus was coming through, praise God, I believe she says, I believe that if I can just get there and can just touch the hem of his garment, then she says, I will be healed. Praise God. She believed that. Amen. And see, that is a principle of the word of God. See, faith worketh through our words. Praise God. Faith flows with our word because that that you believe, that you talk about. And the more you talk about something, the more you're going to believe in it. Praise God. Because every time we talk about something, we are reinforcing what we're talking about. And God reminded me to remind the people, he's waiting on us. Praise God. And so that prayer request, if you're waiting on healing, it's already been done. Praise God. Now, what you need is for it to manifest. And in order for it to manifest in the natural, God reflected back that when he went to the cross, See, we've got to understand this. See, the devil don't mind the church playing religious. He don't mind you looking pretty and looking religious. But he does mind when you understand what the word says, and then you begin to operate like the word says and not like the norm. Praise God, because sometimes the norm is out of line with the word. Amen. And so he don't like that when you're going to shake things up a little bit. Praise God. But as God began to deal with me with this word, I'm going to tell y'all something. I had an experience yesterday just like I hadn't had in quite some time. Praise God. I called myself. I was, I was earlier during the day. I had my, my focus set on how I was going to go and get me some breakfast and go spend some time and work on the word and do all of that, and then I realized I had to go to Amazon, and so I was saying, Lord, if they send a VTO, that means voluntarily time off where I can take off and then not count against my time. I said, I believe I might take that. And one of the reasons I said I might take it, you know, because I had been invited to a birthday party that I kind of wanted to go to, but it seemed like God had other plans. Praise God. Sure enough, they sent the VTO, and I got the text, and when they got the text, now I'm going to tell you, now I'm going to tell you how this is a law. Because normally when they send a VTO, you better have your phone already there because somebody will done already took that slot before you can claim it. Amen. <laughs> and so I was hesitating a few minutes. Under any other circumstances, it would not have been available by the time I logged in and got there. Amen. But when I logged in, it was still sitting there. And I hit the button. I said, yeah, I claim this one. And so when I hit the button, it, it accepted. And they verified that I wanted it. I said, yes. And so they, they gave me the time off just like that so it would not count against my bank time. And so, okay, and so as I began to do that, I said, okay, now let me go where I can get some peace and quiet and start meditating and, and, and getting into the word of God because this stuff was resonating in my spirit. And then I said, I'll go get my word together, and then I might go on to the birthday party. As I got into the word, praise God, the Lord began to minister, and I just stayed into the word. 
and God kept reminding me of this particular passage of Scripture here and began to point out the importance of our words. Praise God. And he reminded me that you continue to tell the people that death and life is in the power of the tongue. And we need to understand that death and life really is in the power of the tongue. Praise God. And he began to reflect back and show me different examples. And then I started working on this word and then I got up and went into the prayer mode and I started walking and praying. Amen. About like I'm walking and preaching. Amen. Amen. I tell myself I'm going to be still all the time, but it seems like it don't happen. Amen. Praise God because this stuff gets to stirring and I get to moving. Amen. But as I began to listen to what the Spirit of God said, I ended up spending hours Praise God. Just going through the same stuff, and the Lord was just sharing example after example. And he says, nah, I'm waiting on, God is waiting on me. Praise God. In other words, we ain't waiting on God. God is waiting on us. Because what God reminded me was, is he said that when he went to that cross, praise God, amen, and when they nailed him to that cross, everything, all the sin, all the sickness, all the provision, everything that we had, it was nailed on the cross with him. And when he come off the cross and they buried him, and when he rose again, he says he rose with all power and authority. Because, see, he was in, on this earth, and he was operating in this earth as a human. Praise God. Because, see, we got to understand, just like we got laws in the land, there are spiritual laws as well. Even though he was in the flesh, he was yet still God. But in order not to violate the integrity of his own word, the way he set it up, he had to operate according to the laws of the spirit realm as well as be in line with the earthly laws as well. Amen. Amen. So we got to understand that concept so we know where we're going. And now when you got laws in place, then you got to have somebody that will enforce the laws because anytime there's some laws on the book, you always got somebody that's going to try to break the law. Amen. And in this case, when Jesus come up on that ground after them three days, praise God, and he says, now all power and authority has been given to him. But he told, when he rose up again, praise God, he says he took that same power and that same authority that he had when he rose and when he left to go to his father, praise God, he told them, now I give it to you. He gave it to us, the believer. We've got that same power and authority living on the inside of us. So he says, if I nail my sickness, your sickness on that cross, and I gave you the authority, then it's up to you to do something about it. I gave you the power to take care of it. Not me. As much as I'd want to, I told you to take care of it. And he looked, took me to 1 Peter 2 and 24. 1 Peter 2 and 24, it says, By his stripes ye were healed. W-E-R-E, past tense. Already done. Healing has already been done. But the devil who slithered in here through Adam and Eve to get a body to operate in, praise God, because, see, spirit beings can't operate in this earthly realm without a body. So they got to have somebody to cooperate with. Amen? And so when he tricked Eve and, Adam and Eve got Adam to eat, that's how he gained entrance into being able to rule in a certain amount down here on this earth. That's why God had to send his son to take back the authority that was already given to Adam and Eve. Because, see, before they gave up the authority, they were walking in the garden every day having paradise. It was good life. And it said that Jesus come down or God came down and walked with them and communed with them every day. They had fellowship on a normal, everyday basis with God. 
it was clear. They didn't have all this sin. They didn't have no sickness. They didn't have none of this light, shortness, and all of that. But that devil, which was Lucifer, praise God, who was an angel, he got in his mind that he wanted to be like God. And as I began to look at that thing a little bit deeper and begin to think about it, some of the, um, I guess, the, the doctrine or whatever may have gotten it twisted a little bit because they were saying that Lucifer got kicked out of heaven and a third of the angels went with him because he was going to rebel against God. Now, look, you can't rebel against God and, and, and win. No, what happened was the Bible used angels to go minister to his people. The angels are ministering spirits, and they are sent at the word of the Lord. Praise God. That's why when the angel visit the saints in the Old Testament, praise God, they want these little flimsy things that we see with the little white robes and the wings and look like cute dolls and all of that. They were mighty warriors. They were big in stature. And so every time an angel show up, the person would fear and start trembling because they were something to behold. And the first thing out of the angel's mind is, fear not, for God has sent me. And then they begin to give them a word because they, they were so scared when they seen him because they ain't seen nothing quite like that before. Amen. Praise God. I want you to kind of understand kind of what, what was happening and where we we're going and why there are certain laws and things that's in place. Praise God. And so as the angel would go ahead and give the word, then it would be up to the person to take heed to the word that was spoken and carry the word out. See, the angels didn't have the authority to do it. They were just messengers. Praise God. God set it up since Satan came in and took, got taken hold of Eve and Adam so he could gain control and begin to rule this earth. At, from that point on, he started trying to build his kingdom. God is asking us as believers to build his kingdom. So there's been an opposing force ever since then. That's why God had to put them out of the garden because they, they ate of the fruit that they should not have eaten. See, they ain't know nothing about no evil and all that stuff before they ate of the fruit. All they knew was good because that's all they existed. But when they ate of the fruit, it opened up and then they saw everything because the devil sent a lie, deception again. See, a lie sounds like the truth. And because a lie sounds like the truth, if you don't investigate, you will fall for the lie. There are many folks sitting in jail today because somebody can lie so good that they got convicted for something that they never done and serving time for something they never committed because somebody lied and the lie was bought and they got sentenced as a result of that lie. What the devil has been doing is lying to the body of Christ by sending thoughts to your mind and make you feel this away and make you think this away and all of that. And because it seems to make sense, because we see so much of that happening, we tend to catch right up with it and go on with it and go to norm, what everybody considers the norm. But that's why the Bible says broad is the way that leads to destruction. Narrow is the way that leads to the truth, the few that's going to find it. Because that means you got to go against the grain. You got to go against the norm sometime. And when you start doing that, you got to take some heat. Praise God. Amen. And so as God began to, to help me understand this about how the laws operate in the spiritual realm, we have to follow those spiritual laws. And because he put those laws in place, we've got to enforce those laws because what Satan is doing is trying to twist God's laws. And the only way he can get us to violate, see, the Bible tells us, you see, we got to understand this. God says all authority was given to him, and then he gave it to us. So the devil really does not have no more authority than what we will give him. 
That's why the Bible says he goes as a roaring lion looking for whom he can devour because he know he can't devour everybody because some folk is able to see him when he comes. And when they see him, they call him out. And then he got to go somewhere else because he can't do He don't have the authority to override you when you call him out. See, that's why God says Satan is just like a bully. When you call that bully out, he a lot of talk, but ain't too much action behind him. And then if he don't want to get too embarrassed, he might attempt to come on in to try to keep from looking too bad and try to fight. But I can tell you what's going to happen. After that, he ain't coming back to mess with you no more. Because he, now he know you're willing to fight. And so when Satan is able to slip something in and you buy the lie, he'll continue to build on that. Now, how does he build on these things? Because, see, if the devil showed up as he was, everybody would be running. Would nobody fall for the stuff he was sitting in because they'd be scared of him. So he dresses it up, makes it look real good and sound real good. And then we kind of fall right for it. So with that being said, we got to understand we've been called to enforce the law. God set the spiritual law in order, and we as the believer, he says, I've given you the authority. Yeah. And so since he gave you and me the authority, then we got to do something when the devil breaks the law. When we break the law of the land, the policemen, they enforce the law. They don't write the law, they only enforce the law. We ain't got nothing to do with what the law says except enforce the law. We ain't even got to agree with the law. But if I'm an enforcer, I got to enforce the law, whether I agree with it or not. And if I'm going to get the results from God, I got to operate according to his law in order to get what I need. And we as believers have been called enforcers of the law of God. We have to operate in the law of faith. And the Bible lets us know in Romans 10, it says, well, you know, how can you hear the word unless you got a preacher sent to teach or preach the word and that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. So that means we got to get into the word and understand what the word is saying. And then when we understand what the word is saying, then we'll understand what we are supposed to do according to the word to enforce that when the devil gets out of line. And since God had already taken care of our healing, what we got to do now is take the authority and the power that God gives us and stand against that sickness that the enemy is trying to sell. We got to begin to not accept it and tell it it's got to go because the word of God says, by his stripes I were healed. In other words, I was already healed. Healing has been done. Now I call healing manifested in this body now. And as we stand on God's word, the enemy has to let go of his hold. Praise God. And you have to know what the word is saying in order to enforce it. Now, under the normal circumstance, a police officer can't go beyond the law, or they ain't supposed to go beyond the law, do they out of order? We can't go beyond what God's word says, do we are out of order? But when his word gives us that authority, then we got all the right to operate in it. Because remember, our kingdom is not here. Our kingdom is his kingdom. We just live in this earth, but our heavenly kingdom is where we operate and sent from while we're here on this earth to do the bidding of the heavenly father. We're just like ambassadors sent to another country to represent this country. God sent us here to represent heaven on earth. And since we're going to represent heaven on earth, that means we're under heaven rules, heaven guidelines. And so we have to operate that way. And when it contradicts with the natural law down here, we have to back up and stand on God's law because we're not in this kingdom. And that's why ambassadors in the land, they get pardoned. Because the United States can't do nothing with them folk when they come over here as sent as an ambassador because they represent that country. They got to send them back to their country. We are ambassadors for Christ. 
because we are believers and have accepted the work that's already been done. And so one of the principles that the lady began to operate here, she says, I do believe that if I can just get there and touch his garment, if I don't get nothing but the hem up, I will be made whole. She opened her mouth and says, I believe. And then when she said, I believe, she took action and made her way through the crowd. Now, according to biblical history, she had an issue of blood, so according to Jewish law, she was considered unclean. She really wasn't supposed to be in no crowd. Matter of fact, she was supposed to be identifying herself and saying, unclean, unclean, so that nobody would come near her because according to Jewish law, if they touched her, then they come unclean according to the Jewish custom. But this lady understood, I want my healing. And I'm going to take a chance. I'm going in this crowd. I can't help what the norm is because the norm might be for me to holler unclean and then everybody get away from me. I need to get to Jesus. And I'm going to get to him because I believe that if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'm going to be healed. And she began to declare that, so she got in that crowd and crawled her way through there, praise God, and made her way to him. And when she got to touch the hem, the Bible said Jesus immediately felt virtue go from his body. But when she touched the hem of his garment, she was healed immediately. Why was she healed immediately? Because she'd already said, I believe if I can touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. I will be healed. And as soon as she touched it, that her faith made contact and her healing was received right there in the name of Jesus. And then Jesus turned around and said, who touched me? And then the disciples with him, I'm about to talk our talk right now. They said, all these folk up in here, how in the world you think we're going to know who touched you with all these folk around here? This crowd is too large for that. But see, Jesus knew that faith had been exhibited. And when he turned around, the lady realized what she was doing because she knew she was out of order because she didn't identify herself as being uh, unclean. But she said, with fear and trembling, she fell down in worship and, and, and told him all that had been done. Now, Jesus didn't get the woman for not following protocol. Because see, what the devil does is he try to make us think that what I'm dealing with is because of what I've done. I'm not holy enough. I didn't quite dot all the I's and cross all the T's. So really, God ain't going to do that for me. I know he healed folk, but because of my lifestyle and everything I've done, he ain't going to do it for me. That ain't got nothing to do with the law working. The law of faith is still going to work because God going to honor his word. Praise God, because the Bible says all have sinned and come short. That's why he, when he went to the cross, see, what we, we, we fail to understand, and that's why I say religion sometimes make this thing harder than it is. And that's what keep folk away from the church because it's too religious. And then they looking at you that's making all the rules and saying everything and saying, well, that's what it is. I don't want no part of that. But that ain't the same thing that what this word is saying. You have to know the law. A police officer has to understand the rules before he go out there arresting folk. Because do if he arrests them unlawful, he can't hold them. They got to be let go. So he got to understand what the law says in order to be in line to enforce it. We got to know what the word says in order to enforce it against what devil is bringing our way. But when we enforce the law that God wrote here against what the devil is trying to do, the devil ain't got a ground. We don't need to give him that power. But now if I release myself to him and let him have his way, he'll whip me to death. He will have a heyday because I'm not resisting. The Bible says resist the devil and he'll flee from you. We resist by declaring the word of God. 
We resist by obeying the word. And we speak the word. We ain't sitting there trying to argue with him in our own vernacular. No, we're going to speak the word of God. And he has to yield to that word. And every time we call that name Jesus, according to that word, he remember how bad he got whipped in front of all his imps. Praise God, because all of his authority and power had been taken back from him. He really don't have no power. So that's why he have to do this deception thing and begin to play with the mind. The battle's up here in the mind. Praise God, because the Bible said, as a man thinketh, so is he. So our dominant thoughts will drive us on the direction that we go. And so if we get into the word and let this become our dominant thing, where the word of God is being read, the word of God is being spoken, then that means our focus is going to be on the word. But now if we're sitting there in front of the uh, TV, looking at everything and anything, 24-7, following everything that the world says is okay, and not measuring it according to the word, then we're going to be that carnal Christian. And we're going to live that carnal life. Now understand something. That, that you just be a carnal Christian. That means you still say, but you ain't going to be need to look for no rewards from the Lord because they ain't going to have no crown to go. But because you accepted him as salvation, you say, but you're not going to have a victorious life while you're going through this earth. That's why the Bible says to be carnally minded is death, but spiritual is life. Praise God. When we walk according to that word, that brings life. Because the Bible says in John, it says, the thief coming but to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus says, I've come that you have life and that you have it more abundantly. And so since we belong to him, he wants us to have that abundant life. But he can't move if we don't operate according to the law. Even though he would love to, he won't violate his word because do that will mess up the whole integrity of the system that he set up in place. And God is going to honor his word. Now, and God is not going to violate your will either. Now, if you don't want to be healed, or if you don't want to stop that habit or change, he's he not going to override it. He gave you a free will. Amen. But what I want you to understand is you can change it. Yes. You can be healed. Yes. But you got to use your mouth and begin to speak what God says if you want that change, because that is a law of faith, and speaking is a very large part of that. Praise God. Amen. Because Proverbs says that the belly of a man uh, will be filled with the words from his lips. Praise God, or from his mouth. Amen. In other words, what you speak is what you're going to be eating. And if you just think about it, in general, things you've been saying, and then look at what's happening in your life. A whole lot of us are part of what you talked about and thought about and shared with other folk all the time. Amen. And how the devil works. Give you a real simple example. You get the sniffles. You start saying, oh, Lord, I believe a cold coming. You open your mouth, you say, I believe a cold coming. The devil said, boy, she believed a cold coming. So what do they do? They just build on a little bit. Now you ain't just sniffling. You start sneezing. Add a little more to it. You say, Lord, this thing about to get me. You keep speaking it, and it keep going just the way you say going. Now what you need to say is, the sniffles come. Oh, nope, I ain't got time to be sick. I got to go. You got to go in the name of Jesus. By his stripes, I'm healed. I'm not receiving this call. It's got to go. And I stand upon the word of God and I walk in hell. I'm not going to take it. Not going to have it. 
And then you doing what you supposed to do, guess what? Oh, it was just a symptom. See, the symptom is not the actual uh, diagnose or the actual disease or what actual sickness. It's just a symptom that look like that's what it is. But now if you start calling it, that's what it's going to be. The word is really simple, but we complicate it because the devil has us operating based on feelings, based on what we can see. Because by human nature, we like to control. <laughs> we like to know what's going on. And when you tell me I don't know what's going on, it's kind of hard to let go. And the devil knows that. So what he do, he plays with that and begin to feed the mind so he can take you where he wants you to go. But when you recognize where he's going, then you call him out and you declare this word and you begin to speak what Jesus was speaking. And as I begin to look at that thing and I, I, I look down there and she started saying um, that if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'm going to be... Well, if we go on over there in the, the, the sixth chapter, you remember when Jesus went back to his hometown and he was teaching in the synagogue in Mark chapter 6 there? And he's standing up there teaching the word. And they were just amazed at his teaching. But you know what? They started talking. They said, that's Mary and Joseph's son. He the carpenter. How he up there teaching like that? It said that they were offended. And while he was in that town, it said he only healed just a few sick folk. He couldn't do no great works in his own hometown because guess what? The folk was offended. They couldn't believe that this carpenter, Mary and Joseph's son, could be doing what he was teaching and preaching about. So sometimes you get too familiar with the folk you're around. And what they have to share with you, no, they don't know what they're talking about. They need to go on somewhere else. Go on somewhere else where they don't know. You miss out because you judge who's delivering. Now, Jesus said he only did a few. But he said a prophet in his own town is without honor because they're too familiar with him. The principles of God's word they are the same regardless. That is why God says we must walk by faith and not by sight because God understands his laws are not going to change. His laws are going to be the same. So the law of faith is going to operate regardless of what it looked like in the natural if I will enforce that law and walk according to that word. That ain't going to change. It's just like this electricity thing. Praise God. Electricity, we enjoy the, the, the being able to flip the switch, get the heat, the lights, and all of that good stuff. But guess what? Electricity was here all the time. Through the thunderstorm, static electricity, and all of that. But it took man a while to figure out how to harness it and bring it together like it is now, where all we got to do is hit a switch or something or push a button, and boom, everything is working and, and, and real easy and simple. Electricity flows through copper, okay? That's why they wire with the copper stuff so that, that that electricity or power can flow through that. And so they build all these power lines. Now, there's certain laws in electricity, and folk tell you that work for these power companies. If you break them rules, you're going away from here. You're going to be like burnt bacon. Chris Bacon, okay? You grab all that power and you ground it, you're going away from here. That's a law. Now, a bird can land on that power line, and because that bird ain't grounded, ain't nothing going to happen to that bird. But let that bird touch that power and touch the next one up there. Fry. Yep, he's good and gone. Electricity, that's a law on how that thing going to work. And you can say, well, I don't believe all that stuff. And see, you hear me say, and you hear the word says, because I'm going to tell you, I'm going to quote what the word says. 
Death and life is in the power of the tongue, and they that love it will speak it. So we must speak life if we want life. And this is not to be critical by no means, but this is to help us move into that victory of what we're trying to get to. Our provision, our help, and everything that we needed, God provided through salvation. But the devil makes the saints think that salvation is just getting me saved so I can get into heaven. Salvation is the complete man. The complete man. Not just your soul being saved. No, everything is in salvation. It means complete. And if you don't operate it, you won't receive it. And it has nothing to do with God didn't answer the prayer. And I've done read too many examples, and I've seen too many situations. That's why I tell folk, they say, well, you went in and you prayed for somebody. And they still die. You know what I tell them? Yeah, I prayed according to the word. But when I won't in their prayer, I don't know what they were seeing. It's just like right now, some folk got more faith in the doctor than they got in the Lord. They holler, hallelujah, praise God, and something happened. Instead of praying, said, Lord, I stand against it according to the word. I'm not against doctors. God made doctors, so don't get nobody to get it wrong now. They automatically don't think about prayer. They automatically say, doctor. And put all that faith in the doctor. But guess what? You go to the doctor if he gives you a prescription. If you don't follow the prescription for what he prescribed for you, then you can't come back talking about, I went to the doctor, but it didn't do no good. But did you take the medicine he prescribed? If you didn't take the medicine, why would you think something's going to change? It's the same thing with God's word. If God gives you the word, and then you say, I don't believe that. I ain't going to do that. So if you're not going to operate the word, why blame God? You didn't do his word. Operate the law before you complain that it did not work. Because if you operate the law, it's going to work. Now, what you got to do is take your natural mind out of it and stand on what this word is saying so that the devil don't try to trick you because you didn't see it happen 10 seconds later. Some things you just got to keep declaring, but you got to understand it's changing. It's working. Praise God. But if you stop and turn it around, you can negate all the good that has already been done. That is a law, and we must understand that. Praise God for that. So God is waiting on me. We must enforce God's word because the enemy is the one that's violating it at every angle he can violate it. But when we enforce it, that means we arrest Satan and stand on this word so that we can receive our results. This is a very simple but powerful principle, and it's going to change your situation. And as God leads, we're going to get more into this. Praise God, because we must understand it, because, again, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. Amen. It's not about just feeling good. It's about getting something that's going to change your situation. Praise God as the choir comes. Praise God.